Thank you, thank you, and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packwell. Welcome to EWTN Live. We're bringing you guests from around the world. And tonight on EWTN Live, we will talk about the life and media ministry of Venerable Father Patrick Payton and how praying the rosary keeps the families together. And uh, it's just amazing life, amazing life. But before we get to that, I want to talk briefly with EWTN's Director of Acquisitions and Co-Productions, Mr. John Elson, about a great new program coming up, highlighting an American priest, and it will be coming to EWTN. John? Well, good to see you. What do you have here for well, us? Well, I wanted to uh, let our EWTN family uh, watching us at home know that on December 18th at 10 p.m. Eastern, we'll be premiering a new film entitled A Cross. And this tells the early story of Father Augustus Tolton, who was the first African-American Catholic priest. Now, in 1854, Father Augustus was born into slavery. Mm -hmm. His mother and father uh, were, were slaves, and they were baptized into the Catholic faith of their, of their owners at the time, as was uh, Augustus and his two siblings. When uh, Augustus was nine years old, his father escaped to join the Negro Regiment of the Union Army to fight for equality for, for, all, for all people. And to end slavery. And to end slavery, yeah. exactly. And then uh, shortly after his departure for the Union uh, Army, uh, his mother, uh, Martha Jane, took Augustus and his two siblings and they tried to, they, they, they escaped uh, m uh, through the state of Missouri across the Mississippi River to the free state of Illinois. And that's where this, th this, this movie tells that early chapter. And we know subsequently that Father Augustus was raised in Quincy, Illinois, was educated uh, by Catholic priests and nuns who helped him, despite the racial uh, animosity of the time. There was a successful p petition to Rome to allow Father Augustus to study for six years in Rome, where he was mm -hmm. ordained a priest, and returned back to Quincy, Illinois, and subsequently to the Archdiocese of Chicago to minister to, to uh, blacks and whites uh, as well. So it's a, it's a story of in tremendous determination yeah. Tremendous perseverance, and he really is a heroic figure for all of us. Oh, he he really is. I I have done a couple shows, two or three shows on Father Tolton. He's amazing. We got a little clip we want to show you, so let's take a look at that. A man should know where he come from. Now you know where our peoples come from. Our peoples was free in Africa. We didn't have no master. We didn't have nobody telling us what to do. You don't belong in here. In Africa, they was free. And don't you never forget that. Son, I'm going to fight for freedom. They starting up a Negro regiment. The blue suits win the war, and we all be free. Papa! Papa! We need to get our freedom. Don't say that, boy. No, sir. Turn around. Those were auctioneers, honey. What if they split us? We ain't waiting to find out then. It's time to go. That boy don't belong to you. Yeah, you'll be able to learn more about the Father Tolton movie at acrossmovie.com. Acrossmovie.com. And you can find the information for the air times at EWTN.com. That'll sure. be on the 18th, 18th that's of right. December. Thanks, John. Thank you, we'll be back in just a couple minutes with tonight's guest to talk about Father Peyton. So please stay with us.
Thank you. Welcome back. Our guest tonight is a priest with the Holy Cross Fathers. He is also the president of Holy Cross Family Ministries, which is a continuation of the ministry of yet another Holy Cross Father, the Venerable Father Patrick Payton. It was Father Payton who is known as the Rosary Priest, who by the time of his death in 1992 had helped produce over 600 television and radio shows. He also produced three feature-length epics on the life of Christ, and he had preached in person, live, to an estimated 28 million people. Now, he didn't do it to gain notoriety and fame. He wasn't one of these, you know, folks in Hollywood that everybody got to love. No, he did it for love of the Blessed Mother and for the good of families and for peace. So here to tell us more about the ministry and mission of Venerable Father Patrick Payton, Payton please welcome Father Willie Raymond. Father Willie, welcome. Yes. Pleasure to be here with you, and great it's a great introduction you. on Father Peyton. That's you packed a lot into a few words. Thank well, you. Well, there, there's there's an awful lot to say about him, mm -hmm. and we're so glad to have you here because um, certainly I became more aware of Father Peyton in the um, in, in the seventies and eighties. Sure, uh, so when I just was more aware of him, um, but he was the one who had popularized that great statement, the family that sure. prays together stays together. Mm -hmm. Now, did he come up with that? You know, people over the years have told me, that's Mother Teresa's phrase, <laughs> or Fulton Sheen. And, and, uh, and I always uh, say, well, it's really Father Peyton who popularized it, but the, the person that handed it to him was a Jewish copywriter in Hollywood named Al Scalpone, and uh, I, met, I met Al in 2000 when I first went out to a Family Theater Productions to, to work there for 14 years, uh -huh. and he said, you know, that phrase, because I didn't know this, but he said that phrase, I gave it to Father Peyton because I, I fell in love with his mission and what he was doing, and he was always talking about how the family bonds around the rosary, that it creates a unity that's unbreakable and and uh, out of love and peace. So he said, so Father, how about this? The family that prays together stays together. And Father Peyton took that and ran with it all around the globe. Sure, it's, it, and it's interesting, <clears throat> you know, with, with that kind of ecumenism, here's a, a Jewish man, apparently of Italian mm -hmm. background, uh, the, Italy has had a Jewish community since about 200, 150 BC. Mm -hmm. That's an old Jewish community, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's got great continuity. And and he recognized the goodness and was respectful. He may not. He, he didn't become a Catholic, did he? Uh, no, he didn't. No, no. no. His, he, but he still showed sure. respect and was helpful because he could recognize the goodness. Something all of us have to do for people of all different religions. Sure. You don't have to agree, but you can show respect and see the goodness and promote the goodness and keep the respect. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great uh, lead into uh, one, of the, one of the amazing experiences that Father Peyton had. He, he went to a lot of Catholic countries in Latin America and in, uh, in Europe and the, you know, the United States, which had a significant Catholic population. But then he went to India, which is, uh, even today, is less than 2% Christian, mm -hmm. and had a rosary rally in Bombay, and the Cardinal, De the, the Cardinal Gracious, the earlier one, there's another Cardinal Gracious in Bombay now, or M Mumbai, and the Cardinal said, uh, you know, I don't know if this is a great idea because you know, there are not that many Christians. Well, they were flooded with with uh, hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Hindus, along with Christians that came to the Rosary Rally. It was a great it was a great success, and Father Peyton came away from that 
realizing or, or sensing that the people of India are naturally spiritual, are inclined to the transcendent. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was a, you know, along with what you said about ecumenism and even, even an openness to other, to other uh, faiths and appreciating them, but, mm -hmm. he, but he's thoroughly Catholic. He, you know, I, I right. like, to, I like right. to recall that when he grew up in, he was born in County Mayo in 1909, very poor family. He, there were nine children in the family. When his parents got married, John and Mary Peyton, they promised, and John said, we will pray the rosary every day of our lives, of our married lives. And when they had the first child, they included that child and it continued. So Father Peyton grew up saying, Praying the rosary is like breathing the air. You just do it. It's, it you right. don't even think about it. That's right. So it was a wonderful. And John Payton and Mary, they've affected millions of people through their children, through this young Patrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a remarkable thing um, that, you know, a, a, a decision by a young married couple, mm -hmm. you know, that, was for their own family. And I'm sure they were focused on their own family, but they also gave an example of, you know, that made come alive the phrase, the family that prays yes. together stays together. Mm. And he came from how many kids in this family? There were nine children in the family. And nine I think children. he was sixth in line. Mm -hmm. And the older ones, as they, as they reached, um, uh, late adolescence, uh, three of the sisters emigrated before him to America, and then he and his brother Tom uh, came to America when, when he was 19 years old mm -hmm. and ended up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. They just could not survive in Ireland because there, there was no work and they, the father had a very small plot of land. So he gets to, uh, he, and he had this dream too. He wanted to be a priest and he used to write to missionary orders and, and asking, asking um, for admission. But in those days they had a surfeit of uh, a surplus of uh, candidates for religious life and the priesthood. Mm -hmm. So he got rejection after rejection because he didn't have the money. He had, he had also left school early because he had trouble with one of his teachers and all of that. So it was, uh, he was uh, an interesting young man, to say the least. Yes. And so he, he, uh, he gave up on this dream. He, w he got angry about this and then he said, oh, I'm gonna go to America and and uh, he thought the streets were paved with gold. I'll become a millionaire. <laughs> so, he, so he ends up in Scranton. He couldn't get a job in Scranton either. And until the, uh, the, at the cathedral, the Monsignor there uh, offered him a position as the uh, sacristan custodian. My grandmother came over to this country right after World War I. And she also said, I thought they told me the streets were paved with gold, but it was more paved with horse droppings or words to that effect. And, and a lot of hard work. But, you know, this is, uh, that's what immigrants did. Mm. You know, they just got in there and they worked very hard. How did he come to the Holy Cross Fathers? Uh, the, uh, th this was the Cathedral Parish in Scranton and the priest from Notre Dame, well, I, University I've of Notre Dame. I've celebrated Mass there. Ah, you have. Yeah, Saint for the 40 hours. Sure. Yeah, years ago. Well, there's a little garden there, too, in honor of Father Peyton now. But he, he, um, he heard these uh, priests from Notre Dame preaching the, the, what we would call a parish mission today. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and his older brother, Tom, both spoke to the priest and the, the priest... Uh, and, and the Monsignor, too, encouraged them, thought that they had vocations. So uh, both of them needed remedial work for their education, but they were accepted into the seminary, uh, went to Notre Dame. They, had, they were in with the high school kids, even though they're in their 20s. Yeah. They, they finished high school. They also entered the university, finished, uh, uh, finished uh, the BA degree in philosophy. And, and Father Peyton, as it turned out, turned out was very bright and... Uh, he even one of his philosophy professors when he couldn't be there he would ask Pat to to continue the class mm -hmm. because he w he was that bright he really? graduated magna cum laude and uh, went on to Washington to study theology graduate theology and uh, it was very close to realizing his great dream and 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 yet one day 
this would be 1938, he, um, he coughs up um, blood into his handkerchief and he kept it a secret, but eventually it got so bad that he couldn't keep it a secret anymore. Right. They brought him to the emergency room and they even thought he might not survive that night. So the doctors, he did, and the doctors examined him the next day and they said, unfortunately, young man, you have an advanced case of tuberculosis. Right. And in those days, that was a death sentence. Right. So he was told he had between two and four months to live. So he went back to Notre Dame, he's in the infirmary, and uh, he is, uh, he, in his own uh, words, was depressed. He said, this is the lowest point in my life. I'd even questioned God and, and all of that. And he said, uh, Father Cornelius Hagerty came into uh, my room and he was his favorite uh, professor at Notre Dame and an Irish immigrant priest. And he said, um, Pat, if you believe in God, and I know you do, because you brought that with you from Ireland and from your parents, pray to the mother of God. He never says no to his mother. And he said, Mary is alive. And Father Peyton said, those are the most important words I heard in all of my life. Mary is alive. She'll be as good to you as you believe she will be. If you think she's a 50 percenter, that's what she'll be, or 100 percenter, she'll be that. So uh, he, uh, he said, um, hearing those words, getting everybody to pray the rosary free healing, he said it was like, uh, the image he used was um, a, a, a hay stack and kerosene thrown on it and then a match. He said it would, my faith came alive again. It was a powerful, powerful experience for him. So they prayed the rosary and, and he put himself into God's hands through the intercession of Mary and he said, now I'm not describing a miracle, I'm describing the quiet, gentle way that Mary works. But slowly, day by day, I was getting stronger and stronger. And, and eventually the doctors did further tests. They said, we don't understand this, but uh, you're going to live. And they gave him a letter saying that he could return to studies. And he said, I felt like I was a prisoner on death row and all of a sudden the doors are flung open. I have a whole new lease on life. So he said, I promise God, that I would spend the rest of my life spreading devotion to Mary and to the family prayer and family rosary. So that's the passion behind everything he does. As a matter of fact, there's on. a great line by the actress, she's now deceased, but she was very popular, Loretta Young. And she said she never mm. knew any man who loved a woman yes. as much as Father Peyton loved the Blessed Mother. Yeah, that was <laughs> It's a great, great quote. Mm. By the way, I want to let folks know we, we didn't get the uh, numbers up on the uh, uh, prompter there, but if you want to call in for the second half of the show, uh, take down these numbers. Uh, if you're in North America, it's 1-800-221-9460. 1-800-221-9460. Outside North America, you also call in. It's area code, uh, country code one. 205-271-2980. So country code 1, 205-271-2980. We'll announce that again later on. Just want to make sure we get that in there. Now, um, he, you know, had this, this great love. I mean, it, it was, you know, not ranting and raving. It, it was a, a depth mm. of love that he communicated. If you read his autobiography, you, you, you can't help but pick that yeah. up. Uh, I've, it's been a lot of years since I read that. Uh, I think I read it back in the 80s or something. Uh, what was the title of his autobiography? All For Her. All For Her. Yeah. Great book. Great. And, you know, yeah, very inspiring. And, and you see that love drove him, who was on the edge of death, mm -hmm. you know, and he went all around the world, from the edge of death to encircling the globe. He did. He had two, two I, I would say, almost miraculous accomplishments. The first one was uh, 19, he's ordained in 1941, the same day as his brother Tom at, at uh, Sacred Heart Church at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's assigned because he's still fairly fragile in health. So he's assigned to uh, Albany, New York. 
And, and there he gets on a, a small radio program, and it's the beginning of uh, realizing that, uh, number one, his, his great passion was to get families to pray the rosary. So he started, he started sending letters to bishops and pastors and people all around the country. He wrote, he wrote uh, thousands of letters personally and, and stamped them. He would get the students at St. Rose College in Albany to, uh, to, to help him. They had typing class and then letters uh, that were addressed and all that, hand addressed or typed addressed. And uh, he, he began the family rosary and his goal was to, to get 10 million families in America to pray the family rosary. Well, he far exceeded that. As you mentioned, over 28 million people heard him live, but many more millions around the globe took up, took up the rosary or continued praying it with a new fervor because of, uh, because of Father Peyton. And he, he just had a simple way of, of telling fathers, this is your role in the family and, yeah. and, uh, and make sure that your wife someday We'll, can, we'll be able to say, I'm so glad that God gave me the husband that I have and yeah. the father for my children. He just, he spoke in very common, common language that people yeah. could understand. But in Sao Paulo, Brazil, there were over 2 million people that, that came to the Rosary Rally. In Rio, a million and a half. And sure. Matter of fact, let's take a look at a clip of some of what he great. did. Yeah, yeah. He was one of the great spiritual leaders of the 20th century, the founder of the worldwide family rosary crusade. He was Father Patrick Payton of the Congregation of Holy Cross. I never dreamed in those days that God in his goodness was planning this wonderful thing for me, that I'd never have a day's rest in my life in order to plan and execute and follow through the chain reaction of this truly enormous challenge as it enveloped the earth. Father Peyton was the perfect priest for the times. He passionately reminded us of the value of family prayer, and he conveyed that message with great conviction. Good evening. This is Jimmy Stewart. Tonight, the family theater stars Loretta Young and Don Amici. You know, since this is our first program, maybe we ought to have a dedication. So right now, let's dedicate the family theater to your family, with the hope that families everywhere will always be together, and that your home will be a happy one, with the conviction that prayer, simple prayer, will help to keep it that way. That clip reminds me of uh, the fact that he didn't just use radio, did he? No, he used uh, first film and then television, Easter and Christmas specials with with uh, Princess Grace and Loretta Young and and uh, um, uh, what's his name? The uh, <laughs> we were just talking about him earlier. Uh, uh, oh, Raymond, Raymond, Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr. Raymond, Raymond Burr. And, yes. Uh, he so the, the, in addition to the Perry Mason for those of you who watch reruns <laughs> or Ironsides, yeah, Ironsides, yeah. Um, he uh, he uh, discovered uh, on May the thirteenth, nineteen forty-five, the power of the radio, and also went on to, to Hollywood from there. But uh, just just uh, one thing in in nineteen forty-five, it was. Um, uh, there was a program for Mother's Day that was planned on the mutual broadcast system, and here was—it's an amazing because he—he um, he had to um, uh, approach the the senior uh, uh, executive at the mutual broadcast system, which was, I think, the second largest uh, radio network in the country at the time. Mm -hmm. L.C. Dick, who was Jewish, he has, he has all these friendly relationships with Jews, and he. Uh, uh, she said no. She's heard all these proposals to have an hour of on national TV or national radio, and and she said uh, no to him initially. And then he said, okay, that's wonderful. You you have all these wonderful theories about helping families and people with your 
with your radio programs, but now you have an opportunity to really make a difference in the lives of so many millions of families after the war. And, and, and she said, okay, I'll do it. You can, you can get it. So he, he, had a <laughs> he had a persuasive <laughs> Irish way about him from what he, I understand. He did. He, he, um, uh, he had the, the, the parents and the sister of the Sullivan brothers, five brothers who all died on the same ship, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Indianapolis, yes. in World War II. And then Archbishop Spellman, later Cardinal Spellman, President Truman had just become president, and he endorsed the program too. And she said, but it would help if you had someone from Hollywood who is well known. And uh, so he said, well, who, who's the, the biggest star in Hollywood? And they said, uh, Bing Crosby, but you, you know, it'd be very difficult to get him. So he calls him up and he gets through to Bing and he explains and, and Bing says, as soon as you said rosary, you had me, so I'll do it. Yeah, Bing so, was himself a uh, committed Catholic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that program was, was a smash let's, hit. Let's take a look at it. Uh, sure. we, have, we can listen to it and we'll have this mm -hmm. little clip ready. His first radio program was over a local station in Albany, New York. And on Mother's Day, 1945, Father Peyton's message went out on the first nationwide family rosary broadcast. Mutual's Radio Chapel. Today it is fitting that we as a nation give thanks to Almighty God who has strengthened us and given us a victory. That was said by President Truman, who proclaimed today, Mother's Day, as a day of prayer for the people of the United States, whatever their faith, to unite in offering joyful thanks to God for the victory we have won, and to pray that he will support us to the end of our present struggle and guide us into the way of peace. The President called upon us to dedicate this day of prayer to the memory of those who have given their lives to make possible our victory. This was <laughs> right after VE uh, e Day, yes. the victory in Europe. You know, and they still had a few more months uh, from May until mm -hmm. August uh, for the war in the Pacific. But um, this is right after VE, and people were excited, war wary sure. because of mm -hmm. the, the, the fight with the Empire of Japan, but still really excited to have defeated the Nazis. So. This was a great, great joy. It really was. Then that led to his moving to uh, Los Angeles, to Hollywood, beginning, uh, beginning the radio dramas, uh, Family Theater of the Air, for 22 years straight. He had the longest running program in Mutual's history. With, uh, and <clears throat> his agreement was he had to have a major Hollywood personality each week on the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, began with Loretta Young and uh, Jimmy Stewart, as you heard, and all these, all these great characters. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> folk, beside, Raymond Burr was someone who was on often, but uh, also uh, uh, James Dean. James Dean, first on-screen credits in film. Yeah, first on With I, Father Peyton. That this was his breakthrough into the film. You know, George Lucas, when he was a student at USC, a film student, worked on a project at Family Theater, and his first on-screen credits, too, were with Family Theater. He was uh, the assistant AD on, on, uh, on uh, assistant... Uh, Director. Uh, photographer, okay. uh, cinematographer. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he slept in our basement for two weeks. Uh, <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to meet him now and remind him that, that uh, yeah. this was the beginning of a great career. Cause yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the, a clip of James Dean for mm. one of the great icons of the mid-1950s. He is risen, John. This is the veil that was wrapped around his sacred head. Yet I do not understand. He will enlighten us, Peter. Come, we must spread these good tidings quickly. <laughs> Amazing. It is. Amazing. <laughs> uh, a, a long way from east of Eden, but, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, in, back in Hollywood, the, um, when I was working out there, we had a student film festival competition, and, and I had to um, call, we had chosen Maureen O'Hara 
at the oh, time. Yeah. God rest her. She yeah. just died a couple of years ago at the age of 95. And uh, so I was calling her to ask her if she would be the, the honorary chair of this film festival. And I thought I would get her secretary, but she answered the phone herself. And, and I said, is this Miss O'Sullivan? And she said, there's nobody here by that name. And she hung up the phone. <laughs> so, so I called her right back and I said, uh, Miss O'Hare, I'm really sorry. I, it's just slipped out. We have a young priest staying with us at the rectory and his name is O'Sullivan. And she said, well, it was a big mistake because none of us liked that woman. <laughs> so uh. she went on and she said, uh, she said, you know, your father Peyton, when he came to Hollywood, he came to me and, and um, he, and I, she said, I was at the peak of my career at that time. And she said, I, uh, he came to me and uh, asked if I would be on his program. And I said, no. And she said, I told him, you're, you know, you, you're, you, you look like you're fresh out of the seminary. You're a young Irish immigrant and you don't know anything about this industry. And I'm at the top of my career. Why would I want to help you? No. So <laughs> she said, he fell down on his knees and he started praying the Hail Marys and tears are running down his cheeks. And she said, my heart melted. And so I said, okay, I will help you. See, John Wayne never tried that in those movies with her. All right, we've got to take a break. Again, the phone number is 1-800-221-9460. 1-800-221-9460. Or if you're outside North America, is country code 1-205-271-2980. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, so please stay with us and call in. Welcome back. Uh, you ready for some questions? Sure. Let's start off with Noah. Noah, where are you calling from? Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Great. Welcome. Welcome indeed. And your question or comment? Uh, my comment is I'm 18 year old, years old and I try to pray the rosary daily and I've used Father Peyton's um, him. I've listened to him on YouTube and mm. I just wanted to share how great it's been. And I encourage you, everybody, if you struggle uh, with sometimes praying the rosary, to uh, pray with Father Payton, and he can help you. And the images, they help you to meditate. So thank you very much for all of the work you do. God Thank bless. you very oh, much, great. Noah. That's, I do that, too. Mm -hmm. I'll look up some of those videos on YouTube sure. and, and watch some of, some of those. And there is a rosary, the rosary You can pray along with them. Right, can, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and taking a look at some of the um, uh, the, the s scenes they do scenes from the mysteries of the rosary, mm -hmm. and it, it's wonderful. And you just look up, you know, the mystery, and you'll find. The, I find him a little fast, hard to keep up with. He's yeah. like he's going through the the rosary, but it, it's it's his own voice. And yeah, yeah, we used to whenever we went anywhere in a car with him, we knew we were going to pray, not just five decades, but depending on the journey, mm -hmm. how long it was, it might be all 15 decades. Mm -hmm. He would pray 20 now. He would love this. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. And, you know, the, uh, this young man is also part of the Legion of Mary. Did ah. Father Peyton do much with the Legion of Mary? 
You know, he he supported all of those groups, the the Fatima, the Fatima Blue Army, mm -hmm. and all of that. But he didn't identify with any one particular, and just, and he just would just encouraged all. Yes, he encouraged all and yeah. lords and all of that. He never went to Medjugorje because that was a little after uh, or late in his life. He dies yeah. in 1992. Yeah, it's um, it, I, I f remember when I was newly ordained at the Legion of Mary. Um, got me to go to Skid Row in Chicago mm. and hear confessions. And they'd go into the neighborhood and the bars and all around bringing folks in. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, Lisa and Mary's great, great missionaries. We have another caller. Hello, Maria. Yes. Hi, where are you calling from? California. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. And what is your question? I like to know if uh, yes, Father Peton would have a message today for f broken families, brothers, sisters not talking to each other because mm -hmm. of unforgiveness mm -hmm. or harboring hurts. Yeah, wow. yeah great question, Mary, really because is. there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that in our society today. That's, uh, I'm, I'm sure he would begin by saying, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. But it's a quote from Tennyson that he loved. But it was a, a recognition that prayer really can change things. And we saw that in the, in the Philippines. Uh, uh, the, uh, in 1985, there was, a, there was a huge rosary rally. And this is late in his life. He's sev in his late 70s now. And um, the year after that big rosary rally, Cardinal Sin said uh, the... the uh, the Marcos regime uh, was being protested by, by uh, women, nuns, uh, children, holding up rosaries. And he told them, he told the army to go out against them. And Marcos and, did, not Cardinal yeah, Sin. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not, not Cardinal Sin. Get our Sin. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, so Cardinal Sin is, was telling me in his office, he said, uh, people reported seeing, seeing a Blessed Mother and a man dressed in a white uh, you know, in a white uh, cassock, and he said, "I really believe that that our society, that the the Marcos regime, was overthrown by the power of that prayer because the soldiers would not fire on nuns and women and children holding up rosary beads." Right. And he said, right. "They they so uh, when when that happened, Marcos had to pack up and leave, and and that was over, and democracy returned. So that's the power of." of uh, prayer, but in, in your family life, it's always so difficult and we, th we might tend to give up on people, but prayer, prayer can really change hearts. One of the things that happens, and Maria, I, I, I strongly urge this, is that you get as many folks in the family who are willing to pray hmm. to start that. You know, you don't wait until everybody wants to join in because mm -hmm. yeah, you won't get started. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, they might say no. But get the ones who know we are not solving our problem. Sometimes the more we talk about it, the worse we make it. Mm. This is not unusual in families. So instead of talking about it, get them the ones who are willing to pray, to start praying. And one of the first things you'll notice is that it is very, very difficult to stay mad at somebody you're praying for. Mm. Uh, try it. Well, don't no, actually don't That's try great. it. But, but it's <laughs> try prayer. It works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> prayer makes it difficult to stay angry. And a lot of times people are afraid, well, what if they start to think that they're right and I'm wrong? Uh, you know, if I act peacefully, they'll think I'm wrong and they're right. So pray for them. Mm. Your goal is for your own heart to change and start there. That's the only heart you really have any control mm. over. And what Absolutely. you want is to lose some of that control and give it over to God so that the Lord God has more control over the movements in your heart. And you want Our Lady 
to very much be part of it. We're coming up to the celebration of the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of our country. And we need Our Lady's prayers. And then after that, just four days after, is Guad Our Lady Guadalupe. The reinforcements. <laughs> and we, she's the patroness of the Americas, mm -hmm. but, but the whole hemisphere. We need her prayer in our families and in society at large. So let's start off with that, okay? Maria, that was a great question. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's uh, extremely important. We have Barbara on the line. Hello, Barbara. Yes, sir. Where Your are you father. calling from? <laughs> Meridian, Mississippi. Well, I go uh. through there on a regular basis, <laughs> driving through on I-20. I grew up in New Orleans, and so I knew Father Pat through his brother, Father Thomas. Yes. He was, his brother was my pastor at Sacred Heart High School, well, grade and high school in New wow. Orleans. <laughs> Father Pat used to come and visit with us a lot. And mm. I remember when he had his uh, rosary program every day, no matter where we were playing in the yard or in the street, we were always called inside to say the rosary. Wow, that's, um, <laughs> you know, that, that, that parish in Canal Street, it, it was, um, uh, his brother was the pastor there, as, as you mentioned. And one, one day, uh, Father Pat needed $5,000 for one of, <laughs> one of his film projects. Right. And he just didn't know where to turn. And uh, a, a car pulled up in front of the rectory and a woman ca came out of the car. She had a brown paper bag with, uh, with something in it and she gave it to the, to the receptionist at the rectory and said, this goes to Father Peyton. So she gave it to Father Tom Peyton and the pastor looked inside and saw the note to Father Pat Peyton. So in it was $5,000 the $5,000 that he needed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Mother Angelica praying for something. Oh, <laughs> that happened regularly. Uh, are you still there? Always yeah. there for three-day treatments to raise money for mm. his road mission. Uh. And I was also contacted by the postulator to talk about my memories of him. So I am so glad he's finally venerable. He's venerable. And you know what? We've just submitted... Uh, a second possible miracle to the congregation for the causes of saints in Rome. So uh, please keep praying that, that he will be recognized and beatified as, as, uh, as the saint for family prayer. What, know, a, what, a interesting, what an interesting story. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's cool to be, you know, because you, you know someone She's who's living history. in the pro <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Although uh, the older we get, the more all of us are living history. She sounds young, though. Yeah, <laughs> she's young. She's just a young person. The <laughs> but what, one of the things that um, would be interesting, he wa did become an American citizen, I assume. He did, yeah. yes. So he mm -hmm. would be yet another one of our American saints. Yes. Yes, uh, we've got a number of them who are immigrants mm -hmm. that became citizens, St. John Neumann. Mm -hmm and uh, Mother Cabrini. Uh, mm -hmm. So it would be ni nice to have yet another one who would be uh, yet again another American saint. Mm -hmm. We need sanctity in our country. This is no small issue. And, you know, his own, one of the great things about him, we are showing some clips of, you know, these big gatherings of uh, praying the rosary that he had. No, enormous crowds. What's what makes what's something so cool is that his sanctity spread out. It mm -hmm. wasn't something about just his own inner feelings and stuff and how he felt. The sanctity went forth sure. from him yeah. to uh, go out into the whole world. And it was phenomenal because. By nature, I think he was shy and uh, and gentle. But when he when he uh, was speaking before uh, before these these huge crowds, or even before a, a, a parish mission, this uh, this very powerful witness to God, to Mary, and the power of prayer would come forth, and just uh, very 
very persuasive. So many, so many men went away from these, these rallies uh, with, a, with a new dignity and responsibility as a father of the family and as a husband and, and as, a, as a Christian. One, one of the other things, too, that I think is part of the uh, a human side to this dynamic is that it normally takes a woman to fire a man up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, yeah. I was talking to uh, a family I know just a couple of weeks ago, and I just happened to mention how most boys don't really care how they look or how they smell. <laughs> You know, they, they just don't until they catch yeah. the eye of some lady or she mm -hmm. catches his eye. Then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they want to groom themselves. They want to look yeah. good. And it, it takes that love of a woman to fire a man up. Mm. For Father Peyton, it was this love of Our Lady that is a holy kind of love, but it still fired him up. It was. And he... He was in constant conversation with her, constant dialogue. Whenever he had a major decision to make, he would pray and, and have a conversation with her. And then if he's writing a letter, uh, an important letter about a project or a solicitation, he would place it uh, overnight before the Blessed Sacrament and at the tabernacle. And, and in the morning, he would, um, he would either take it and tear it up or he would say, yeah, this... This is what Mary wants. And he always loved to call himself Mary's donkey. I'm just the one that brings her wherever she wants to go. Now, one of the other, you're president of the, the Family Theater Productions. Holy the, Cross the, Family Ministries. Yeah, Holy Cross Family Ministries now. Uh, and you're all working on a special film about the life of Father Peyton, correct? Yes. Uh, it's going to be called Pray. Pray, the story of Patrick Peyton. Let's take a look at a clip from that. That's great. If I were to tell you this story, you'd say, you're a liar. Seriously, it, you can't make it up. You really cannot make it up. It's as simple as that. The crowd estimated of a half million people gathered today in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, Father Patrick Payton. Through the largest crowd in the history of San Francisco. I'd like to speak to you about a remarkable man, Father Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton, one of the world's best known Catholic priests. People try to describe Father Payton, and it's almost like trying to carry water in your hands. It slides through. It was almost unbelievable. You'll be looking around, and all these people are here to listen to him. The energy level was like somebody who was superhuman. You might be saying with your voice, Hail Mary, full of grace. But your heart is telling God just what I said. Dear God, I love you. People would be in tears listening to him because he had such a powerful voice. It was just unreal to think that a young boy from the parish was mingling with all the film stars. He never came back with an American accent. He was always Irish. He was capable of anything, apparently. We didn't know it at the time. I want to talk to you about my dear friend and mentor, Father Patrick Payton. Well, he was a little bit of a brat, but he was a teenager. You know, he was no saint, let me tell you. I'm for God, for peace, for justice, mercy, truth, love. He might have gotten knocked down, but he always got up. I'm for stronger homes and loftier lives and the better use of time. It was uncanny now, the way that people reacted to his voice. It surely was coming from God. But first of all, I'm for prayer, family prayer. The family that prays together stays together. That, that uh, film is uh, finished, and we're in, negotiating, in negotiations for the release. We, we believe there'll be a theatrical release. Oh, okay. You know, a, a lot of times when you have a project like this, you hope it's going to come out fine and all that. This is so far 
beyond what I even hoped for. It's, it really captures Father Peyton. Those of us who grew up knowing him and, and even in Holy Cross who, who, uh, who know him know that uh, I believe he, he is a saint and at the same time I know that uh, saints are not perfect people either but they're perfect instruments of God's grace coming in. So I see that in, in Father Peyton and I, I just, um, uh, I, you know, I know at the very end of his life he was with the Little Sisters of the Poor in San Pedro and, and he was clearly dying. His, um, uh, that, that last night he died just about uh, early morning hours of uh, June the 3rd, 1992. And uh, the last words that the sisters heard him utter were, Mary, my queen, my mother. And after that, no more. He was trying to finish the beads and he couldn't. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I remember the nuns telling us that if you can't finish the beads, yeah. the angels will finish it for you. Uh, dying. Sure. You, you join them in yeah. the finishing project. You know, after, uh, uh, I think in 2004, when Jim Caviezel was filming The Passion of the Christ with uh, Mel Gibson and Steve McAvity and all of that, his manager, uh, Beverly Dean uh, brought him over to Family Theater with his wife and I was showing him around Family Theater and he said, uh, I showed him the, the picture of Father Peyton on the wall and he said, whoa, he said, I've been here before. He said, I was a young, a young actor in Hollywood and yeah. I saw that, that billboard above your building and, and he said, what's that doing in the middle of Hollywood? I, you know, I grew up with that. And well, Hollywood certainly so, needs it. <laughs> so, so he said, uh, instead of going to that place across the street, uh, which is a strip joint, he said, I drove into your parking lot. I rang the doorbell and this elderly man answered the door. And that was him, Father Peyton. And he said it had to be 1991. Wow. And he said, I, I don't know where the words came from, but I heard myself saying, well, yeah. We have, to, would, we have to finish up. Would you, would you hear my confession? Yeah. And, and, uh, and he said, oh, yes, son, come in. And he said, I wasn't leading a very good life at that time. He was very tough on me. Well, we have to, we're running right out of time. Okay. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> and Lord bless you all, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you for Sorry being for with us. That's okay. You know what he said? You have to, you have to decide. Thank you.